Dr. Kemi Lawrence, it's Saturday, the 12th of October, 2024. I'm going to start part two of the Anua Adelike story. In part one, I told you basically how everything unfolded and where we're heading towards a DNA test because it's better to have a DNA test than to just argue back and forth. In this picture you're looking at, this is Anua Adelike today. She's a 10-year-old girl. I have to be a little bit cautious about what I say here because she is now 10. The last time I saw her, she was five. I threw a fifth birthday party for her. I said that in the first part. And I supported her for a year. I paid her school fees after we found a school for her. And I also gave her grandmother 10,000 naira every month as um, allowance for a year. Now, I also took Anu to First Bank of Nigeria, my bank, and I opened a kitty account for her. And I put some money in that kitty account and I've been saving into that account since I saw her last, which will be 2019, early 2019. So it's been five years and that I saw her in five and a half years. And the account at First Bank is still there. I have not given the signatory to Anu's mother yet because she doesn't talk to me anymore. You know, after that incident of me asking her about B Red, it turned to some kind of anger and she blocked me on my old Instagram page. Remember that old Instagram page, Kemi Lawyer? So it's been a long time since I spoke to all of them since 2019 when I moved from Ibaran to Lagos. You know, I think that I did a lot. A lot of people say, oh, you went out of your way, you did a news conference, all the media heard her story, eight or six. As eight of six, six to eight media outlets, and the story was everywhere. But I've done my part. I don't like to insert my seventy stories because in journalism, it's not the thing to do. And I felt that I inserted myself in this story when I started doing things like supporting the little girl, getting her school fees paid. She was not in school. So I just did that as a humanitarian thing. But when her mother felt a little bit you know, restrictive about questions I was asking her. She may have felt that I was just putting the video out there, but I wouldn't investigate. You know, I asked her about the header of the message she received from the video. It's strange because the message itself, okay, looked like something coming from the video, but it was B Red's account that that message was sent in from. And I showed her, I said, this head is showing B red. So if Davido was actually trying to use his cousin's account to send the message and not his own brand account, I can also understand in that way. Because at that time, 2013, 2014, he was just breaking into the artist thing and his management may have been using that Instagram DM um, you know, for him. Instagram was fairly new in 2010 and, you know, by 2013, you know, artists had these things and so on and so forth. So this picture here is Anu at 10 years old. I think this is her birthday shoot. And Imadi, Davido's other daughter. And it's very important that Davido gets to this story as soon as possible, or the Adelike family in general, because Anu is a forgotten daughter. And the looks just get, you know, just keeps getting stronger. So this was Anu's 10th birthday, and I believe this is Imadi's birthday as well. This is their 2024 birthdays. They obviously look like sisters, but the lies that Imadi has been fed is going to be detrimental to her down the line as she grows up, because she's not the oldest child. And this is what I've been reiterating. Now, this is the day I took Anu to First Bank. She was five. And that's Toby in the background, customer service agent that opened the account for Anu at the First Bank branch at um, Secretariat Ibadan. This is the same branch I opened my account in 1969 at Standard Bank of Nigeria. It's the same location, same First Bank, it's still there. That's where I opened the account for her. And this is David and you know, his father. And this is what I call a hierarchy Hierarchy of who is, number one, the birthright line of these children. Now, I have Anu as number one, the oldest child, and that's Ayo's picture. The second child is Imadi. The earlier the child Imadi, the better. 
Imadi is the second child, Sophia's daughter. The third child is Haley, Amanda's daughter. The fourth child is late Ifain, and that's Chioma's child. And the fifth one is uh, Larissa's son. So this is the hierarchy of Davido's children to me after my investigation. Number six and seven are Chioma's twins. I don't know of any other children out there. We hear a lot of rumors, but my own thing is, if they don't settle this right now, okay, it'll get worse as these kids get older. And David has an empire. It's a lot of money in that empire and his father's empire. And by the time, like, everybody else is gone, dead and gone, and these kids are around, they, they will start suing each other for what belongs to them and all that can get really pretty dirty in this um, life. So these are officially the children of Davido. One thing Davido said in that last, you know, part when I talked about it was that I was pushing it. No, 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 I wasn't pushing it. We're going to go to the DNA now. So this is today. This is Ayo Labinja today and Anu Adelike. You can see that Anu pretty much grew into a beautiful young lady. You know, she's going to be 11 years old next month. So November. Her birthday is two days before Davido's birthday. 21st is Davido. 19th of November is Anu. Now going on the DNA test. Somebody tweeted this back in 2018. Let's be true to ourselves. This child looks like Davido, even without the DNA test, but it's prettier than Imadi and Veronica. That means the child is prettier than Imadi and the mother. Davido should cater for the child. That is his right as a father. If he doesn't want kids, he should play safe. This is what somebody said. There's a million tweets out there. I just picked this one. Now, so they went for this DNA test. Everybody was there. Shino Rambo, when Shino saw the baby, Shino said he wants nothing to do with this DNA case on the day of the test after seeing the baby's resemblance. I posted this in 2018. Um... Shino Adeleke actually thought, that's Heidi's um, husband, thought that this is David's child and there shouldn't even be a DNA test. That's Shino's opinion. But for me personally, everyone should have a DNA test. So they went from, I wish you can, drove them to a DNA test place in Lekki. The doctor was a Lebanese, a prominent Lebanese doctor. Now let me say something about that area. That hospital or clinic or lab, that lab is now shut down. It doesn't exist anymore. The business has gone out of business. But according to Rocco Labinjo, Anu's grandmother, and the mother, um, Ayo, when they finished the swabs and the test, as they were about to leave and go in the car, a door was cracked open. And Rocco saw the Lebanese doctor and Davido exchanging an envelope. Davido was handing a big envelope to the doctor, okay, presumed to be full of money. So Rockwell Abinjo pinched Ayo and told her to move and come and see the door. And she saw the exact thing. David was handing this big fat envelope to the doctor. They couldn't snap it. They couldn't, you know, nobody even thinks, you know, that last minute, the, the way the body and the brain works, they just saw it, it was a flash. As soon as they saw that exchange of what's supposed to be money, it became a problem. I have said that test is not right because the test came out as David not being the father. The doctor of the DNA lab that conducted that 2014 paternity test introduced himself with a fake name and then he later corrected himself. When they got there, I have said he said another name and that was not even his name. It is okay for David to leave a paternity test and openly tip the lab workers with cash as everyone left the DNA test. Does that mean it's tainted? When David handed that big envelope to the Lebanese doctor, they now said he was tipping everybody at the lab money, maybe because it's David, but it wasn't good for somebody that went to take a DNA test there. And the mother is there as well as the child. So did you know that David brought his entire crew to the DNA testing site that his father chose in 2014? This was a private affair, it became public. His crew was there. Everybody was there. Some of them were in the waiting room, the whole 30 BG was there. I think this story needs to be solved very soon. But this is what happens if the world were normal. Good luck to Anu Adeleke. And that's all I have.